Hey everyone, this is Nick and KDE Plasma has a new release out, this time KDE 5.24. This one puts a lot of GNOME inside of your KDE, but it also improves the breeze theme, notifications, Wayland support. It's not groundbreaking by any means after four months of development, but it still adds a lot of quality of life improvements and small changes. So let's take a look at what's in there, just as we're going to take a look at today's sponsor, Only Office. This video is sponsored by OnlyOffice, the free and open source Office suite that's fully compatible with Microsoft Office documents formats. OnlyOffice has a desktop app available in virtually every packaging format you might want on Linux, but it also runs on Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android. The interface is super intuitive, especially if you've been using Microsoft Office, as it's really close. And if you want to have your own Office suite in the cloud, you can also run your own OnlyOffice server and link it to Nextcloud, OwnCloud, Confluence, SharePoint, Redmine, Jira, and a lot of other services. I personally only use OnlyOffice on all my computers running Linux or otherwise, and I also have my own OnlyOffice document server linked to my Nextcloud server so I can edit documents online or offline using the desktop editors. Check out the link in the description below and give OnlyOffice a try, you won't regret it. So let's start with the Plasma desktop itself. And this has received a lot of minor quality of life improvements. But the biggest change is the new overview effect, which is, let's say, quite reminiscent of GNOME. Yes, there's a new overview effect that you can access with Super plus W. It's basically the GNOME activities view. You get your virtual desktops on the top part, your open windows in the middle, and a focused search field to use KRunner. You can drag and drop windows to virtual desktops, create new ones, it's all very cool. I still think that GNOME's activity view is better than this new overview effect for two simple reasons. The first one is that GNOME lets you drag the window from the little desktop miniatures themselves, which KDE does not do. And the second one is that you can double tap the super key to open the app grid and just drag the application icons right onto the virtual desktop you want so you can open multiple apps super quickly and have them organized immediately how you want. KDE doesn't allow that just yet. Still, it's a really, really nice addition to the workflow of KDE, and I think that's basically the only effect I would use for window management if I ever switch back to KDE. Another big improvement is fingerprint support. You can now, in the settings, enroll your grubby little fingers, so you can unlock your computer, you can authenticate whenever there's a graphical window that lets you type your password, or you can authenticate using sudo in the terminal. Unfortunately, I do not have a device that has a compatible fingerprint that works with Linux, so I couldn't test it out. Multi-monitor setups should also work a lot better, because all windows will remember the screen they were on when these screens are turned off or unplugged. The scale effect is now used by default when opening and closing windows instead of the fade effect. And the cover switch and flip switch effects are now back, having been rewritten. It's also now much easier to set a default wallpaper. Just right-clicking on any image file will allow you to set it as the background. Panels can be dragged and moved using the main interface when editing Plasma panels, which is going to be simpler to understand than hunting for a very specific move button. Now, I still think that the Plasma panel edit mode is wonky and you often move widgets that you didn't want to, moving the panels is still haphazard. I think it needs more polish. Right-clicking on the desktop will also show you a configure display settings option that would let users arrange their monitors and their resolution immediately, which should also help when multi-monitor configurations are broken. Smaller improvements include being able to make your desktop icons twice as big, although I have no idea why you want to do that, or widgets now animating when you drop them to where you want to be. In terms of system applets, KDE 5.24 keeps changing things around, as with every release, but the changes are relatively minor. The Plasma Pass password manager has been redesigned, and zones that you could scroll through in various widgets now use the same style, although I can't say I find the scroll bars very legible. The weather widget will prompt you to be configured at first launch, so you're saving a step. You can decide to always show the date below the time in the clock, and the main menu sidebar doesn't use arrows anymore to denote that these items will change what's displayed in the right pane of the menu. In the task manager, you can set new tasks to appear on the left instead of on the right, and you can quickly move any running program to an activity by just right-clicking on its icon. 
Programs that play audio will also get a volume slider in their tooltip next to their media controls, which is super handy. Now, it's all small but nice quality of life improvements. They just up the polish quality of KD again. Now, notifications also got some attention. First, very important notifications will now sport an orange strip on the side. So you can tell that it's super duper important you look at it and maybe do something about it. The headers and title text are now more contrasted and more legible. Notifications that are related to a video file will now show a little thumbnail of said file. And the annotate button that's shown in screenshot notifications is now more prominent. Finally, KRunner has a new inline help feature. You can just click a little question mark icon to get a list of what you can ask KRunner. And clicking a specific plugin will give you the list of everything it can do for you and the syntax needed to get it. KRunner is a super powerful tool and is basically one of the main parts I miss from KDE now that I'm back in GNOME. It just does so much and it's so cool that now you can find out what it lets you do. To complete all these changes, global themes can now also change Latte dock layouts, so it should be even easier to replicate someone's configuration in just one click. And the dark mode preference is now in line with the free desktop specification, so third-party apps from other desktops should follow it as well. Now let's move on to the default look. Plasma 5.23 introduced the new Breeze theme, which isn't a huge departure from the previous one, but modernizes it. In 5.24, it's pushed further. The focus effect on various widgets like buttons, text fields, checkboxes or radio buttons has been, as the devs put it, enlarged. Why does that word always make me think of spam mail? In any case, it's now easier to see and this makes keyboard navigation a lot easier as well. Your folder icons will also now follow your accent color if you chose one, or the color used for selections in your color scheme. I'm not gonna lie, it's awesome. It adds that extra touch of personalization to your desktop, and I think that's a feature that should make its way to GNOME and elementary OS as well. Weirdly though, I couldn't find the option to turn that feature off, because I'm sure that someone somewhere will not like it and want folders to stay blue. Now speaking of accent colors, you can now define a custom one, directly next to the pre-made selections, which is much easier than changing the colors in the color scheme itself. Some color schemes have been modified as well, with the basic Breeze being renamed to Breeze Classic, so there is less confusion with Breeze Light and Breeze Dark, and the latter, the Breeze Dark theme, will replace Breeze High Contrast, which has been removed because it just had lower contrast than the dark mode itself. Now let's move on to the applications that Plasma ships. First, the system settings. In KDE, even your system settings have settings, and these have been moved to the system settings hamburger menu. Pages that used a single grid or list, like for example the application styles, now have a more modern frameless style. It's not super noticeable, but it removes a line around the elements and it looks a bit less heavy. The display and monitor settings page now shows the scale factor for each display and their physical resolution. The speaker test feature has been revamped and looks better, and enabling auto-login will now prompt you to make changes to your password wallet so no one can steal your OnlyFans account because your wallet is automatically unlocked when you turn on your computer. Now Discover, the graphical app store of KDE, can now automatically reboot your computer once an update is complete. And it's also now more responsive, showing a bottom top bar if the window is very narrow, like on mobile devices. The updates page has been reworked and looks nicer, and it tells you the source of the update itself. Discover can also open and install Flatpak ref files that you downloaded locally and add their remote to your system. But more importantly, Discover is now Linus proof, which means that if you have broken dependencies and installing something tries to remove your whole Plasma desktop, Discover will prevent that from happening. Nice. And now we just have Wayland to cover. KDE 5.24 keeps working towards making Wayland a first-class citizen. It adds a drawing tablet page in the settings, it supports greater colors than 8 bits, the screenshot tool can now capture the active window on Wayland as well, and support for VR headsets is back with better performance. You can also define a primary monitor, minimize all windows using the widget of the same name, and there are multiple improvements to touchscreen devices, notably to make the virtual keyboard appear or with using styluses. KD Plasma 5.24 feels like a smaller release, and that's probably only had a bit more than four months of development time instead of the six KDE usually gets. The improvements here are minor, apart maybe from the new overview effect, which is cool, the folder icons now following your accent color or fingerprint support. 
The rest is mainly small touches that make the experience more powerful, simpler and nicer. It's basically the continuation of the path that KD has been on for the past 2 or 3 years. It virtually has every option and every feature you might want. What it needs now is more polish in the interfaces that let you interact with its default components, bug fixes and polish. That's it. The next releases should also see the effects of the KD 15 minute bug initiative, which plans to fix bugs that happen in the first 15 minutes of using Plasma, so the experience should be even nicer for most people. KD 5.24 should already be available on KD Neon and you should get it relatively quickly on rolling releases as well. This video was made possible by Slimbook and by using this offer code you can get 150 euros off your own ultrabook called the Slimbook Executive. It has a fantastic 3K screen, a great keyboard, an awesome magnesium chassis. Basically it's a great ultrabook and at 150 euros off you can go wrong. I left a link in the description below. Click it if you want to know more and buy your own. Hurry though, because the stocks are very limited. So thank you all for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn notifications, to launch a comment, launch a comment, launch a comment at the screen. And if you didn't like the video, you can dislike it and launch another comment to tell me why. It always helps with engagement and making that video more popular. So cool. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members and both of them get access to my weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!